Hello everybody out there. Uh, this is the title of the day for uh, December 25th, 2014. Uh, Merry Christmas to everybody out there. I hope y'all are having a blessed one. Um, today, since it is Christmas, <laughs> we're going to talk about uh, the birth of Jesus and um, something very interesting about that. Some of you may have heard about this before, some of you may not, but um, um, where Jesus actually was born. And uh, we know he's born in Bethlehem, but like the actual place where he was born. And um, I think you pronounce it Magdal Eder. I think that's how you say it. Might be butchering it, but it's all, it's called the Tower of Flock. And there is a uh, prophecy for Micah four eight, which says, "And and thou, O Tower of the Flock." Uh, the stronghold of the daughters of Zion, unto thee shall it come, even uh, the first uh, dominion, the kingdom shall come uh, to the daughter of Jerusalem. So the tower of flock is this uh, Magdal Ender, I think that's how you say it, and um, basically it is, um, it's, traditionally it's where the Passover lambs were kept. Um, and they were born there um, and this is fitting why because Jesus is the Lamb of God right the Passover Lamb um, who, who took away the sins of the world um, it's interesting because the theory is that um, in Bethlehem around the city there was um, a region where the Passover lambs were kept um, they were trained and purified by the shepherds Okay, um, the lambs were born in this tower of flock um, under the watchful eye of the shepherds uh, who would then inspect and either uh, certify or uh, reject the lambs, okay? So um, um, that's pretty interesting, just that right there. But um, some of them would, you know, be used in the temple or um, the new, and this is very interesting too, the new lambs, according to some sources, even were wrapped in special swaddling clothing once certified so that makes you know a lot more sense about why jesus was born in a manger and all that kind of stuff right so let's look at that in scripture let's look at um i read that from micah there but let's listen to luke uh 2 um 1 through 21 luke 2 and it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Okay, so they put him in swaddling clothing like they would the Passover lambs. Okay, <laughs> that's awesome, right? Because... Um, it just everything from the Old Testament would be pointing towards Jesus and they did this exactly like that um, he was born in a manger uh, manger can also be uh, translated as a stall or um, crib or any holding area for an animal so that's you know that's that's just awesome to me um, okay and there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. Okay, their flock, the tower of flock. See, that makes more sense now. And it makes sense to how they would know where the child is born, Jesus, where he was born. You'll see that. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not. For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in the manger. See, why is that a sign? Because that's a prophecy. 
of, of the tower of flock, of the swaddling clothes with the put the Passover lamb in and lying in a manger. Okay, so it's like all already prophecy. So when the angel says it to them, they know, oh yeah, well, Scripture says this. Because these are special shepherds. These are, uh, you know, purified shepherds, set apart shepherds, that this is their job. It's just to take care of these. You see that? Just like the wise men were not just three wise men. There's probably hundreds of them. And they were, you know magi who who knew the stars and and prophecies and all this other stuff right and suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising god and saying glory to god in the highest and on earth peace good will toward men amen and it came to pass as the angels were gone away from them into heaven the shepherds said one to another let us now go even unto Bethlehem, and see this thing which is come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste, and found Mary and Joseph, and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things, and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, as it was told unto them. And when eight days were accomplished for the circumcising of the child, his name was called Jesus, which was so named of the angel before he was conceived in the womb. Okay, so it's interesting, right, that they're out, the shepherds are out in the field, away from where the Tower of Flock is, away from, you know, Bethlehem, and the angels, in the, the angels come to them in the field, and the field, right, because what does Jesus say, you know, the field is ripe for harvest, so he comes to them in the field, and, and tells them, you know, what's going on, and here's the sign you need to go look for, and they know where to go look, and when they see it in the Tower of Flock, they even more get excited and go tell everybody else, and everybody's amazed by it. And it also, it's interesting that it builds Mary's faith up in verse 19, but Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And a lot of people believe that a lot of Luke, you know, is, uh, the, the Gospel of Luke is comes from Mary also. That like it's, it's um, what Luke wrote and what Paul knew and also what Mary probably uh, remembered and kept in her heart like this. And then that's why it's a little more detail of the birth of Christ and all that stuff. So I just think that's very interesting because it makes a lot of sense that that's where Jesus would be born because he's the Lamb of God, right? And we see that in uh, John 1, 29. The next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold, the Lamb of God which uh, taketh away the sins of the world, All right, And John <laughs> is already born by the time Jesus is born and so he's you know he's heard all this stuff you know he's heard you know where Jesus was born in the tower of flock and the shepherds and the wise men and all this and that's why John uh, is so confident to say behold the lamb of God right because he knew where he was born so he's like this is definitely the lamb of God this is the Passover lamb for sure uh, 1 Peter 1 uh, 2 through 20 says but um, but with the precious blood of Christ uh, as of the lamb without blemish and without spot see that's another a indication for us uh, a lamb without blemish and without spot the shepherds uh, had to find the perfect lamb with no blemish and no spot uh, who who uh, yeah and he was from the foundation of the world uh, but was manifested in these last times for you and also in Micah 5 2 it says the same thing but lo Bethlehem uh, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet um, out of thee shall he come forth unto me that is to be a ruler in Israel, whose goings forth have been from old, from everlasting. And that's the same thing that, that Peter says here in verse 20, um, uh, before the foundation of the world. Okay. So it's very interesting that all this points to Jesus and him being the uh, Lamb of God. And also we can listen to Revelation 5, uh, 6 to 13, which says this. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne, and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders, stood a lamb, as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent forth into all the earth. And he came 
and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of saints. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation and hast made us unto our God kings and priests and we shall reign on the earth. And I beheld. And I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne and the beasts and the elders, and the number of them was ten thousand times ten thousand and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And every creature which... And it's interesting that this lamb was slain before the foundation of the world, was also born before the foundation of the world. Jesus was there before everything was created. So this lamb was... Also, it makes me wonder sometimes if uh, in Genesis when um, God took an animal and took the animal's skin and made uh, clothing for Adam and Eve, if it wasn't a lamb or a, a sheep that... Um, was not that clothing, which I, it makes a lot of sense to me that it would be. Is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them heard I saying, Blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever. And the four beasts said, Amen. And the four and twenty elders fell down and worshipped him that liveth forever and ever. So, you see, it's all about the lamb, the Passover lamb, the ultimate Passover lamb, Jesus. And it's always been pointing towards that. And just little things like this, like this Tower of Flock, it, um, it, it should build your faith more and more and more that um, all of this is true, you know. That it's all true and it's all about Jesus. Okay, well, have a Merry Christmas. Um, wake and watch for Yeshua. God is love and I love God. Amen.